Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Kind Mind. Some important information before we get started on today's workshop is this and other quick access workshops are intended to be psychoeducational tools and are not designed to provide mental health treatment or emergency response. We encourage you to visit counseling.appstate.edu or call us at 828-262-3180 to learn more about the mental health treatment and options we are offering students currently. If you are experiencing a mental health emergency, such as active suicidal thoughts, please visit our website to read about emergency resources or call your local emergency responders. Resources may differ depending on your location. This workshop may be recorded and shared on your YouTube account or other online venues. Only the speaker's video and the shared screen will be visible in these recordings. In order to minimize potential distraction or disruption, some of your Zoom controls, such as sharing your audio, video, or screen content may be limited during this workshop. Thanks for understanding. Alrighty. So, hi, my name is Kelly Hughes, and I am a doctoral intern at the Counseling Center. And my name is Damaris Bates. I'm a master's trainee at extern at the Counseling Center. Um, and so today, basically, we'll be leading the first session of three for Kind Mind. Um, the purpose of this three series workshop is to help you have more tools for rewiring your brain um, to focus more on the positive aspects of your life and to build up resilience against negative situations. Um, this workshop is about like performance enhancement and becoming your best self. Um, it, it can be also helpful for symptoms of anxiety or depression, um, but really just can be helpful for if you want to increase uh, your productivity or satisfaction with life and uh, your relationship quality. Um, before we begin the session, um, just be sure to get out a, a writing utensil, like a pen and pencil and a notebook paper, um, as well as um, a piece of scratch paper. Um, once you have these uh, uh, utilities, just um, what we'd like you to do is to think about rating your current happiness right now, with 10 being I'm at my most happy, and then one being I'm at my least happy. So just thinking about that for a moment and pausing and then uh, coming back. Um, so in thinking more, what, how would you define happiness? And so for, take a second to write down what you would perceive as happiness. Um, and basically what the research has shown is that happiness is a mix of hedonic and eudaimonic principles, basically pleasure and purpose. Um, hedonic happiness is kind of what you would think of with just basic, every day, like enjoying a good steak, enjoying uh, laughter from friends. It's very situational and it's momentary. Um, whereas eudaimonic happiness is meaning focused and purpose driven. It's not necessarily about feeling uh, pleasure within the moment regarding, or like carnal pleasure, but it's more about um, just a sense of feeling good about what you're working toward. Um, for instance, uh, when imagine if you're working on a physics program that's difficult and you hate physics, but you have the goal of getting into medical school and because you care about getting into medical school, you do feel overall good about what you're doing in your work, um, even though it's not, physics may not be your thing. Um, and eudaimonic happiness is very long-term based. So write down 10 things that you believe um, can impact people's happiness um, and you can pause the video to take time to write out um, 10 different things and research suggests that happiness is impacted by personality factors. Uh, this can include extroversion, conscientiousness, agreeableness, openness to experience are all positively related to happiness. Neuroticism, negative emotionality is negative related to happiness. Money, uh, its research uh, shows that $75,000 uh, is the peak. After that, there is no effect. 
and satisfying relationships, a stable relationships predict resilience with life stressors. Physical health, it appears that there is a two-way relationship with health and happiness. Health can predict happiness and happiness predicts health. Happy people tend to have lower rates of cardiovascular disease, better immunity. They heal faster after inner injuries. They are more likely to have a healthier diet and they live longer. Making and meet goals, having attainable goals have been shown to affect happiness. If one sets goals they cannot make, it tends to lessen happiness. However, if a person is good at their job and makes their goals, that has been shown to increase productivity and happiness. Um, so when thinking about what happiness isn't, um, one of the myths is that if you're happy, you should feel ha hunky-dory all the time. Um, and that is actually not the case. Studies have shown that if you are forcing yourself to be like, I must be happy now, um, that is not going to help you. Um, and it can decrease happiness. Um, there has to be a focus and a goal associated with um, building positive affect. Um, also too, the, there's a myth that if you have all the money you could ever want, you will be happy. Um, there, like there's some truth in the sense of like uh, happiness can be, like having a greater salary up, like up to 75,000 is positively associated with um, being with happiness, how and satisfaction with life. However, once uh, you hit the seventy-five thousand dollar mark, um, basically they find no difference between people who have seventy-five thousand a year versus like two million a year. Um, so knowing that, and then also too, there's a myth that um, happiness is refusing to see the negative stuff in the world and having like rosy colored glasses. Um, which is obviously, um, it, it's impossible as a human to do that. Um, and then finally, sometimes folks will think that happiness is just an, a happy ending and it's a final destination. But the truth is, happiness is a transient state and it is something that you're constantly working toward with specific goals and, um, and with ongoing relationships and meaning making. Um, things that um, are shown to kill people's happiness over time, one is just uh, comparing yourself to others. Basically, um, folks who are um, basically focused upon making all their own goals for themselves and focusing upon how can I be my best self versus looking at other people tend to be much, to have greater satisfaction with life. Um, whereas folks who are very focused upon, like, I don't want to mess up in front of others, I'm worried about failing, she looks better than me, or he has, like, more charisma, that is associated with uh, less happiness. Um, also, relationships, again, are very key to happiness. Uh, and then also, to resentment, uh, focusing upon uh, what one does not have is uh, negatively associated with happiness. Now, the idea is, is happiness something that um, can that we can achieve or is it something that uh, we're born with? And the answer is a little more complicated. Basically, um, we all have a happiness set point and um, each of us has this set point within our brains which have both uh, with a mix of good and bad emotions or propensity to have those. Um, even when major events occur in a person's life, um, basically research has shown um, that it, it circumstances don't affect it as our happiness set point as much. Like for instance, they found that folks who have won the lottery, um, like their happiness will go back to like, it, their mood level will go back to what they were originally prior to getting, um, uh, winning the lottery despite being much wealthier. Um, one of the most dramatic examples of how folks uh, can come back to the same happiness set point is a study that was done with people who suffered paralysis from spinal cord injuries. Um, although these people could no longer walk and often suffered from depression in the short run right after the accident, Basically, they found within six months of being paralyzed, 
um, all the individuals tended to return to their normal mental states prior to the accident. And um, so individuals who had been uh, depressed before remained depressed, whereas folks who had been like had a, a lot of high satisfaction with life tended to, to ha go back to that after the accident. Um, so in other words, for most things which happen within our lives, um, the shift to the happiness set point can often take place regardless of environmental influences. So here in the happiness pie chart, you can see 50% of people's happiness is impacted by genetics, 10% um, is affected by circumstances and environment, and 40% is due to intentional activities. So you can see here for circumstances and environment how little it has to do with all of that. And so when thinking about um, what we have control of, and it looks like it's specifically that 40% um, when looking at intentional activities, um, some intentional activities which can change the happiness set point based upon research is for one, focusing in on relationships, contacting old friends, con be contacting new friends, being sociable is associated with happiness. Um, also having new experiences, being in different environments is a key thing that they have found. Also helping others um, is associated with uh, happiness. And then also to the practice of meditation um, has been associated with uh, changing the happiness set point. Um, in 2004, um, University of Wisconsin-Madison conducted a study that explored brain activity related to self-reports of happiness. And um, they looked in it, a, a lot of individuals, they recorded um, their, brain, their brain activity and basically, um, there was one uh, participant in the study, uh, Matthew Ricard, and basically he was a statistical anomaly in the sense that his brain produced high levels of gamma rays that are associated with uh, consciousness, attention, learning, and memory. And this has never been uh, basically what he, they had found in his brain activity they'd never seen in anyone else. Um, and basically, so they were really interested in why is he, why is his uh, neurochemistry so different from others? And he, he is a Buddhist monk and basically he practiced meditation um, a fair amount throughout uh, his lifespan. And so as a result, they're really, they're really interested in this idea of how much meditation can change um, people's neurochemistry. And we will be getting more into meditation next week, um, but just keeping that on your radar. Um, and then the final thing that intentional activity that has been associated with changing the happiness set point is um, the practice of gratitude. Now, when defining gratitude, it's not just the feeling of being grateful or that attitude. It is both the attitude and the actual doing and behaviors associated with being grateful. Um, in, there was a neuromuscular um, uh, disease uh, study that um, basically looked into um, the practice of gratitude. And they found uh, with 65 adults um, who had this neuromuscular disease, um, they were given instructions to either write um, a gratitude diary uh, for a 21 day period, or they were put in this control group um, where they did not write a diary. And all of them recorded um, their assessment regarding mood, well-being, and health. Um, and then all they were also um, assessed by partners or friends about like regarding like their general mood each day. And the results showed that the gratitude group um, was uh, basically um, more, they had more positive mood and uh, less negative mood on a daily basis. Um, their partners uh, reported that the gratitude participants had a much pos more positive mood, so this wasn't just self-report. Um, and also, too, the folks who were in the gratitude 
group um, were more likely to get better sleep. And they're not really sure the reasons why for why they got better sleep, but they are, but they think that a key thing is that um, the, focusing on life's blessings and focusing on what they were grateful for may have reduced um, the worry or angst that can keep people awake at night. So in the past studies that Kelly was discussing, it uh, re shows that gratitude diaries are effective and it can help um, help people reflect on things and help increase happiness as well. Gratitude diaries typically involve recording and reflecting on things uh, that you are grateful for on a regular basis. And this typically involves uh, three different things. This is about helping rewiring your brain to focus more on the positive aspects of your life and build up resilience against negative situations, which can build up to resentment. Um, so there is five ways you can use to focus upon areas in life to be grateful about. One of them, this includes think of a person who has helped you in your life. It may be a teacher, a friend, parent, or mentor. Spend a few minutes reflecting on the ways they have helped you and the benefits you have gained as a result. Then write them a heartfelt card. Call or visit them to tell them how they help, how their help has improved your life. If you're no longer in contact, write a card anyways and keep it to remind yourself to feel grateful. Another way to practice gratitude is take a walk in nature or in your garden. Think about all the ways that nature helps us to sustain life and feel happier and more comfortable. Focus on feeling grateful for the fresh air and water, the natural beauty of a flower, the peace, of the peace that the ocean, lakes, or the mountains give you, or the shade of a tree. You can think about um, somebody in your life who helps you on a daily or weekly basis, a partner, a parent, a best friend, beloved pet, a boss, a teacher, a cleaner, or a babysitter. Spend a week observing and focusing all the different ways in which they make your life happier or more comfortable. Make a plan to do something special for them to show your appreciation. Another way to practice gratitude um, can be sitting down uh, to dinner at night. Think about the people who helped uh, this food get on your table. This may include the farmer who grew the food, the workers who picked the crops, the drivers who transported it, the person who earned the money to pay for the food and so on. And the last way to practice gratitude is thinking about how you can live a life that conveys gratitude to the planet for all that we have. Don't overuse water or electricity, recycle, buy sustainable products, donate to charity, volunteer to help the needy, work in an animal shelter, or clean up a natural area. It's good to get involved in your community and living responsibly and doing acts of service should help you feel good about your life and more aware of your connection to other living things. Um, so now what we're going to do is getting into a specific activity about practicing gratitude. Um, so what I'd like you to do right now is to um, get out a writing utensil and just take about five minutes, if not longer, um, just to write a, a paragraph or letter um, to someone that you appreciate and why you're grateful for them. This can be a person who changed your life in the past. They may not be even living at this point, but um, that can be a possibility. It can be just, again, someone who you see on a daily, a regular basis. Um, and so, at any rate, just taking that time um, to jot down how they um, positively have changed your life and um, your gratefulness toward them. Um, and so say after pausing and doing this, um, now we'd like you to rate your current happiness after doing this activity. Um, and to think about, um, first of all, has this, how has this impacted you um, when thinking about um, how grateful you are towards someone. Um, and also too, I think the next step again with gratitude, it's a two part thing. It's both the attitude and how you can live it out. And so um, right now, take some time to think about how you might be able to show your gratitude um, to that individual that you wrote that letter to um, and how can you uh, live your life in accordance with 
uh, that gratitude? What are some activities you can do concretely each day um, to do that? Alrighty, so um, if you do have any questions, feel free to email me um, at hughesks at um, appstate.edu. Um, thank you for attending. Um, next week, we will be getting into other intentional activities that have been shown to change the happiness set point, uh, particularly mindfulness and meditation. Um, at any rate, have a great weekend.